But one of the things that was missing from this environmental plan, there were aspects of it, but not comprehensive, and that was the whole greenhouse gas issue. And earlier this, uh, this uh, last year, I had a meeting with the Sierra Club and with the National Association of Counties, and, and we got talking about what was called the Cool Cities Initiative. And, um, and we were talking about some of the problems in that initiative. It's, it's, it's an uh, aspirational document. I'm more interested in effects. I'm interested in, well, if we're going to do that, let's make sure we can measure it and that it actually makes a difference. And so we came up with the idea of working with the Sierra Club of something called the Cool Counties Initiative. And, and we're hoping that this can serve as a template for uh, sister counties around the United States. Why is that important? Well, first of all, most Americans live in counties. There are over 3,000 counties. Many of us are very big and bigger than cities. Um, and so if we could mobilize the counties, and if we could come up with a template that was flexible enough so rural counties could do something as well as urban or suburban counties, uh, we actually could have collective action that could help offset the, uh, the, not just the indifference, the, the hostility of our national administration at the moment. So, aspects of that. Um, let, let's take care of We have a vehicular fleet, the county government, of 3,600 vehicles. That's a lot of vehicles. And, and if we change our fleet, we impact um, other, uh, other decision makers in the region. We instantly create markets. And uh, not every vehicle is easily retrofitted, you know, you get fire engines as part of that fleet. But you also have a lot of, uh, I drove one of those vehicles tonight and it is a hybrid. Um, so how can we get to at least a third of our fleet being a hybrid over the next five or six years? Um, and so now there's a plan to do that. Um, uh, where do we get our energy from? Uh, and we, we committed to 5% of our total energy coming from wind power. Well, we're going to double that. Um, and, and, and by the way, as more wind farms are available, uh, hopefully we'll be doing even more of that, saving millions of pounds of CO2 into the atmosphere. Um, we've committed that every new building and every renovated building that we own will be a LEED certified green building um, using you know, passive solar, using other techniques for HVAC, um, using construction techniques that are more environmental friendly. Uh, green roofs themselves. Uh, and we, by the way, we just dedicated two fire stations. Thank you. Uh, we just dedicated uh, two fire stations uh, that are, in fact, LEED certified um, uh, green buildings. But uh, we own over 300 buildings, so to commit that every one of those buildings over time will be green and any new building will be green uh, is very important. And again, because we're so big, we're a trend center, um, and so hopefully this will affect other uh, communities across uh, the United States. Land use and transportation. Um, Don mentioned teleworking. When I was the I was the chairman of the Council of Governments in uh, the year 2000 2001, and I set as a goal for the region 20% of our uh, of our commuters in the region teleworking by the year 2005. Only one local government out of 19 formally adopted a program and got to that goal, and that was Fairfax. In case any of you are from Arlington and Montgomery, you didn't do it. Uh, they're still working on it. But telework is the one low-hanging fruit that cost almost nothing. Especially here. We're all technology literate. Almost every white-collar professional has lots of technology at home they can work with. Um, and we have two and a half million people in this region who commute every day. If you could take telecommuting one, at least one day a week, 20% of that workforce telecommuting one day a week, you could probably take four or five percent of the cars off the road. You could also probably ease some of the congestion in our transit systems at almost no public investment. And so, and, and so it's really critical that we get serious about telework in our corporations and in our public sector as well. Um, Tree preservation. Uh, we did an analysis of Fairfax County, um, and you know, it depends what point of time uh, you want to talk about tree canopy. Um, and we have to be a little bit honest here. Um, if you go back to the Civil War and you look at the pictures of Fairfax County, the Confederate troops were encamped until 1862 in Centerville, it looks like a moonscape. There are no trees, none. They were all completely denuded for the construction of housing for tens of thousands of soldiers, for firewood and, 
And the Confederates also made Quaker guns with a lot of these fake, fake cannons, so the Union would be fooled into thinking they were you know, more powerful than they were at the time. At any rate, if you, go, if you start around 1970, when the tree canopy um, had recovered, and by the way, in the 1950s, there weren't a lot of trees either, because we were, Fairfax County was the largest dairy producing county in Virginia uh, in the 50s. I don't know that we have any cows left in Fairfax County, but maybe a, a farmer, a, 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 a kid, you know, petting zoo or something, but uh, we don't produce a lot of dairy products anymore in Fairfax County. So we, a lot of that land then got reforested. And then, of course, when the waves of development occurred in the 70s and 80s and into the 90s, that tree canopy shrank. We know trees are very important for sequestering CO2. Um, and so expanding the tree canopy you know, uh, is, is very important, I think, as part of this effort as well. Um, and we've actually worked out the mathematics of it. Um, if we do nothing in Fairfax County to preserve the tree canopy or to expand the tree canopy, it will decline. It, right now it's about 40, 41 percent. It will decline to 37, 38 and stabilize there. And uh, so, of course, the way my mind works, I said, well, what would it take to get to 45 percent? So we'd have to make sure that we stop the decline of 4 percent and add another 4 percent. And that's going to be somewhere in the order of 3 million trees. That's a lot of trees. Um, and, and more importantly, it's a lot of organizational effort. How will we do that? Um, and uh, so we're now trying to figure out what will it take, you know, how can we organize that effort so that by 2030, uh, our tree canopy is back up to 45%. And that will have a dramatic impact on CO2 um, in our community. 